We could use calculus to differentiate the displacement to get the velocity and then to differentiate the velocity to get the acceleration. Differentiation worked in this case because it tells us the rate of change of something. Now we can go back the other way by integrating. So if we have the acceleration, we can integrate it to get the velocity and then we can integrate the velocity to get the displacement. So let's consider how this works. So the acceleration is equal to dv dt, the derivative of the velocity. Now we can rearrange this equation to get dv, the change in the velocity, is equal to the acceleration times dt. Now to get rid of the dv and dt, we're going to need to integrate. So we can write the integral of dv is equal to the integral of a dt. Now it's useful to include our constants of integration. So the limits on our dv integral are related to the velocity. Now usually we give the initial velocity the symbol u and the final velocity the symbol v. So if we're integrating from some initial time, which we'll call t subscript i to stand for initial time, to some final time, t subscript f, then physically what we mean is at t time t i, the velocity is equal to u, and at time t f, the velocity is equal to v. And so we can now place these limits onto our integral equation. So we're now doing the integral of dv and down the bottom we have u because this is the initial velocity and up the top we have v and this is equal to the integral from ti to tf of a dt. And this is a integral equation that we can solve if we know what the acceleration is. Now we can do a similar thing to work out the displacement if we know the velocity. So we know that the velocity is equal to ds dt. Um, so we can once again rearrange this. So we've now got ds is equal to v dt and we're going to have to integrate this. So we want to find out what's the integral of ds and we know that that is equal to the integral of v dt. So we'll say that at some initial time, the initial displacement is given by s subscript i. This is a vector, so we can use vector notation. And at some final time, tf, the displacement is sf, which again is a vector. So we can now place these limits onto our integral. So the integral of ds going from s initial to s final is equal to the integral from t initial to t final of v dt. And if we know what v is, we can solve this to come up with an expression for the displacement of the object at any time. So let's have a look at an example of how we do this now. So the question. The acceleration of an object is given by a is equal to 5.0i minus 2.0tj. Write an expression for the velocity of the object given that it starts from rest. 2. Write an expression for the displacement of the object given that the object is initially at s is equal to 2.0i. Okay, so first of all, we need to find the velocity. So we know that velocity is related to acceleration, so the acceleration is equal to dv dt. So what we're going to need to do is take the integral of a with respect to t, and that is equal to dv. And then what we'll want to do is we'll want to integrate these and we know that the object starts from rest. So what that tells us is when t equals 0, v equals 0. So we can use this fact to place limits on our integrals. So when t equals 0, v is equal to 0. Now we can say when t is equal to t, the velocity is equal to v. So we've now placed limits on our integral and now what we can do is substitute in our expression for a. So we're going from 0 to t and we've got 5.0i minus 2.0t j dt is equal to the integral from 0 to v dv. Okay, so integrating this, 
when we integrate 5.0i with respect to t, we end up with 5.0i times t, and then we've got minus 2.0tj. So we've got minus 2.0t squared on 2, because when we integrate t, we end up with t squared divided by 2, and then that's times j to give it the direction, and the limit is from 0 to t. When we integrate just dv, we end up with v, and the limits are from 0 to v. So now we can substitute in our limits. So we've got 5.0i t minus, here we've got 2 divided by 2. So that's just 1. So we've got t squared j, and then we substitute in 0. So then we've got minus 5.0i times 0, plus when we substitute in here, we've got 0 squared j. So this thing is 0, and this thing is also 0. And here we've got v minus 0. So we've got on this side v. So let's write v is equal to 5.0 ti. So that's this expression minus t squared j. So we've come up with an answer to part 1 now. And hopefully that integration made some sense to you. For part 2, we've been asked to find the displacement of the object given that it's initially, so when t equals 0, we've got s is equal to 2.0i. Okay, so let's scroll up to give ourselves some space. So we've got our expression for the velocity just up the top here, and we're now trying to find the displacement. We know that velocity and displacement are related through the velocity is equal to ds dt. So like we did before, we can write this as v dt is equal to ds. And then what we're going to want to do is integrate both these expressions to get rid of our dt and our ds. And once again, we can place the limits on these integrals. So we were told when t is equal to 0, that s was equal to 2.0i. So I placed this as my lower limit on my displacement integral. And we can say when t is equal to t, the displacement, let's call it s. So we're trying to find out what this s is, what this displacement. So now what we need to do is we need to integrate this. We'll start by substituting in our expression for v from up here here. So we're going from 0 to t, v is equal to 5.0 ti minus t squared j. And that's dt. And that is equal to ds, and we keep our limits. That's an s, sorry, not a 0. OK, so now I'm ready to integrate. When I integrate 5ti, I'm going to end up with the 5 times t squared on 2 times i. And then I've got minus t squared j. So this will be t cubed on 3 times j. And the limits on my integral are from 0 to t. And then when I integrate ds, I just end up with s. And this is from 2.0i and then s. And s will be a vector. OK, so now I can substitute in my limits. So now I've got 5.0 times t squared on 2 times i minus t cubed on 3j. And then when I substitute in 0, because there's a t in both these, I'm just going to end up with 0 again. So on this side, I've then got my s minus 2.0i, because I always subtract off when I substitute in the second limit. OK, so what we're trying to do is find an expression for the displacement, which is s. So we've got that now. We just need to rearrange. So we've got s is equal to 2.0i. And now here, this is also in terms of i. So this is 5 divided by 2. So that's plus 2.5 t squared i minus t cubed on 3j. Just to make it neater, let's combine the i terms together because they're in the same direction. So we've got 2.0 plus 2.5 t squared i minus t cubed on 3j. And then just to triple 
just to check that everything we've done is good, let's just check when, when t equals zero, because this is easy, we end up with this part, this first one is zero. This second term here is also zero. So we end up with s is equal to 2.0i, which is what we wanted because that was our initial conditions. So we've used these limits on the integral correctly.